Mark Hamblin. And our top story today, Alexandria's police chief and mayor are backing the police officer who was beaten while trying to make an arrest at Rapids Regional Medical Center last week. The video, the altercation caught on camera, posted on social media, causing controversy across the area and the nation. Now this morning, the mayor and police chief releasing the body cam footage to the public and breaking down what they say it shows. Stephen Maxwell has the details and we must warn you, the video is graphic. Hey, turn that off. The body camera footage starts with APD officer Adam Dupuy asking 20-year-old Jonathan Rhodes and two other people in a truck on the medical center's property to turn down their music. Turn it off. Oh, off. Because I'm telling you to, and this is private property. They eventually turned off the music. However, sometime later, the music was turned on again. Dupuy asked them to leave the property. Road says they can't because they're waiting on a friend, and after some discussion, they leave in the truck. You can either leave or y'all can go to jail, and I can tell you true. So, yeah, I do. So, what I'm telling you is get in your vehicle. I've already asked you to turn it down, and you turned it right back up when I was standing out here. Hey, we were singing, that's our voices. That's what I'm okay, saying. Okay, well, you're still disturbing the peace, and it's private property. So now I'm telling you to leave. I did say turn it off. You said turn it off. I, I absolutely said turn it off. You said turn it down. In fact, I have it on camera so I can replay it back. You said turn it off first. I did. I did. No, I did tell you to turn it off. You said turn it down. You said turn it I'm not going to argue with you. I'm telling you, start your truck and leave. Obviously, he races. Get out. Get out. <laughs> Get out of here. That was fun out. Racial appropriation. Go. 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 Go before I tow it. Let's go. Get off the property totally. APD says Corporal Dupuy then goes back into the emergency room for his normal duties. After about 10 minutes, Rhodes and the two other individuals are seen back on the medical center's property, this time outside of hospital doors, where Dupuy then confronts them. Hey, turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Dupuy handcuffs 21-year-old Elijah McCall. Back up. What is happening? The officer then asks Rhodes to back up towards him to arrest him. Under arrest. Back up, bro. Back up to me. Because I'm trying to check on my turn around. Friend, turn around. The two struggled. Chief King says Dupuy put his palm on the side of Rhodes's head, but never pulled his hair. That's when the struggle happened. Rhodes then punched Corporal Dupuy, knocking him unconscious. Rhodes then began to beat Dupuy. Corporal Dupuy draws his duty weapon, and Mr. Rhodes grabs the weapon, attempting to take it. Mr. Rhodes states in his interview with detectives, he's reaching for his real gun, so I try to grab it from him. Mr. Rhodes also states, I was holding the gun. Not the gun, but his wrist. Bystanders and backup police officers then intervened. The officer tased Rhodes, and all three suspects were taken into custody. He's dead! He's dead! He's dead! He's dead! He's dead! During questioning, Mr. Rhodes is told by the investigators that the officer could have shot him. And Mr. Rhodes replied, yes, that is why I said I expletive up. In addition, during his interview, Mr. Rhodes was asked by the investigators if he had any questions. And he replied, I mean, whoever talks to the officer, tell him I was serious when I said I was sorry. That's all I want you to tell him. Video of the incident created a firestorm on social media about whether the officer handled the situation correctly, even grabbing the attention of rapper 50 Cent and Los Angeles activist Tariq Nasheed even paid Rhodes' bond. But the mayor and police chief on Thursday backed Corporal Dupuy. I understand that simply telling you, telling you that the officer acted reasonably is not adequate in this situation. We want you to see for yourself. I find that Corporal Dupuy acted not only in a professional and competent manner, but that he exhibited great restraint in what could have easily turned into a far deadlier situation. I want to commend him on his professionalism and demeanor before, during, and after the incident. I fully support his actions. And I am thankful that he did not suffer even greater injuries or worse. The mayor also saying it's time for the community to heal. There are people who want citizens of Alexandria to pick a side regarding this difficult issue. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as your mayor, I say don't fall in that trap, please. You can be for equality and support the police who protect and serve you. 
You can disagree with someone's point of view and still be kind. In Alexandria, Stephen Maxwell, News Channel 5, your local station. There was also speculation that Officer Dupuy spit on Rose. Chief King says that didn't happen. Officials say they aren't expecting any new charges in the case. The city also saying that Dupuy will not go through internal investigation. Body camera from the second officer was not released, but the city said that video could be released soon. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. This oh this public property. I'm outside. I'm outside. How you gonna tell somebody my phone gonna be confiscated? Ma'am, I'm outside. He mean. Okay, so then confiscate your own cameras. What what got to do with my phone? I, you ain't trying to be nice or nothing. They ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm an innocent bystander. You should have said nothing to me. Dude, don't threaten them. Officer is recovering. Second, I'm aware that there's been some good, been a good bit of speculation back and forth, uh, some discussions, and unfortunately, some misconceptions. Misconceptions about what happened with the officer and the three individuals. Since this incident has occurred, <clears throat> excuse me, we have been reviewing all aspects of the situation which is still under investigation. We have had our internal experts review the use of force, and we have reviewed the statements from both the suspects as well as the officers that were involved. In addition, we have reviewed the footage from the officer's body cameras as well as from the hospital surveillance system. Today, in the spirit of transparency, we're going to walk you through body camera footage that captured the entire sequence of events that night. We understand that simply telling you, telling you that the officer acted reasonably is not adequate in this situation. We want you to see for yourself. As you watch the video, Chief King will stop the footage in certain areas to explain exactly what's going on. We will begin with the early contact between the officer and the individuals that were at the hospital. We will end with the footage from the second officer who arrived on the scene, who arrived on the scene at that time. But before we watch, please hear me loud. Be advised that the video is graphic in both language and violence that is contained within it. Again, I'm going to say, the video is graphic in both the language and the violence that it contains. So at this point, I'm going to ask Chief Keene to come up and review. Thank you, Mayor. 
Again, good morning. Thank y'all for being here. And I just want to echo the words that the mayor said and why we're having this information put out here. I'm going to start this. As you watch this video, there are certain images that are blurred out and you'll hear a beeping. This is being done to redact certain information so as to protect the identity of another individual at the emergency room that is not related to this incident. We're having some technical difficulties. We wanted to stop it and explain something here at a certain point. Turn that off. I'm trying to conduct an investigation out here. Turn it off. Off. Because I'm telling you to, and this is private property, so y'all can leave if you don't turn it off. Which I'm trying to get something done over here, okay? Turn it off. That's all. Right. Yeah, I didn't think so. Try to... Uh, we're going to restart this because we if we think it's important that the context we talk about this video and we're sorry we, technical difficulties happen it's a piece of computer equipment As you, there, you can clearly hear the music emitting from a white Ford truck approximately 100 feet away from where Corporal Dupuy is standing. This is the first time Corporal Dupuy says across the parking lot for the individuals to turn the music down. During this time, Corporal Dupuy was speaking to another officer via telephone, attempting to verify information concerning an unrelated person. He was speaking not to a member of the public when he uses the profanity that you hear. It appears that the individuals in the vehicle turn the music down after he advises them to do so. Yeah, hang on, it's a fucking retard. Got that fucking music playing. All right, it turned off. Uh, go into your uh, master index search. Master name search. You in it? Corporal Dupuy approaches the vehicle occupied by Mr. McCall, Mr. Rhodes, and Ms. Fowler, as the music has now been turned back up. Corporal Dupuy advises them to turn the music off. The individuals in the, even in the, in the vehicle even state, turn it down, and he says no, off. He advises them that they can leave if they do not turn the music off. Oh, I'm trying to conduct an investigation out here. Turn it off. Off. Because I'm telling you to, and this is private property, so y'all can leave if you don't turn it off. Which I'm trying to get something done over here, okay? Turn it off. That's all right. Yeah, I didn't think so. Try, uh, then a burp. Thank you. 
for the spot so Corporal Dupley approaches the vehicle again as the music has once again resumed. Miss Fowler is sitting in the passenger window, half in, half out of the vehicle. Mr. Rhodes is sitting in the bed of the truck, and Mr. McCall is in the driver's seat. He advises that he is now telling them to leave the property. They begin to argue with him, and he tells them it's not worth the argument and for them to just leave. Mr. McCall advises that they cannot leave as they are waiting on their friend. Corporal Dupuy advises that he will call them when their friend is released. Mr. Rhodes states, how can you call us? You don't have my number. Corporal Dupuy advises that his friend has their number. Corporal Dupuy advises that they can leave or go to jail and have their vehicle towed. Corporal Dupuy refuses to become involved in an argument with Mr. Rhodes. Ms. Fowler accuses Corporal Dupuy of being racist and makes a comment regarding racial appropriation. They begin to drive away, and Corporal Dupley clearly advises them to leave the property completely, which they appear to do. During his interview later with detectives, Mr. Rhodes admits that they were kicked off of the property. There's approximately 10 minute break where Corporal Dupley goes back inside the emergency room and resumes his duties as his extra detail there it requires of him. I ask you to leave the property. Here. Corporal Dupley advises, observes that the three are now standing at the front entrance of the ER, and he advises them that they are remaining after being forbidden, a violation of Louisiana Revised Statute 1463.3. Remain after bidding at this point, okay? Turn around, stand up. No, stand up, stand up, stand up. Stand up. Turn around, stand up. Turn around. Do not resist, do not resist. Back up, back up. What is happening? Corporal Dupuy attempts to handcuff Mr. McCall, who at first resists. Mr. McCall sits on the ground on his own in a manner of passive resistance. Corporal Dupuy calls for assistance at this time and completes handcuffing Mr. McCall. Bro, you can say that you can move on trucks. I don't need your help. I am not trucks. Back up. Down, literally, say that. Corporal Dupuy tells Mr. Rhodes to turn around and back up to him. He tells Mr. Rhodes he is under arrest. Mr. Rhodes walks towards him, failing to comply with Corporal Dupuy's commands. In his interview, Mr. Rhodes admits, this is where I expletive up, basically. Yeah, I promise you, he's coming out. I promise you, turn around, come here. What he did, son? Back up to me. He didn't even do nothing. Hey, you're wrong. Back up. Back up. Get to off recording. Back up. Back up to me. You're under arrest. Back up. Back up to me. Because I'm trying to check him out. Turn around. 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 Tur
Corporal Dupuy attempts to handcuff Mr. Rhodes. Mr. Rhodes begins to pull away. During his interview with Detective, Mr. Rhodes states that Corporal Dupuy pulled his arm up, but the video shows that Corporal Dupuy never lifted his left arm up towards his shoulders. As you can see, Mr. Rhodes has no shirt on. It is hot and humid, which makes controlling someone very hard because of the sweat emitting from their body. Mr. Rhodes instead pulls away from Corporal Dupuy which forces Corporal Dupuy to grab the side of his head in order to begin the process to take him to the ground. In training, officers are taught that the body will follow where the head goes. You can see from the video that Mr. Rhodes' head is tilted away from Corporal Dupuy, and he is not pulling his hair. Because if he had been pulling his hair, Mr. Rhodes' head would have been going towards Corporal Dupuy and not away from him. We're slowing it down right here. So you can see clearly he is not pulling his head towards him. He is just holding on to the side of his head. Mr. Rhodes continues to pull away from Corporal Dupuy and now spins to where he is facing Corporal Dupuy. Mr. Rhodes is now preparing to strike Corporal Dupuy. He has a bladed body, his fist is clenched. Corporal Dupuy recognizes this and attempts to strike Mr. Rhodes with an open palm heel of his left hand at the same time Mr. Rhodes punches Corporal Dupuy in the face, knocking him unconscious with this first blow. The strike also knocks Corporal Dupuy's body camera off of his uniform and onto the ground. In his interview, Mr. Rhodes states, I expletive up, you know what I'm saying? I punched him, and when I punched him, he fell. Mr. Rhodes continues to strike Corporal Dupuy in the face and head 14 times and kicks him twice in a period of 50, approximately 50 seconds. During this time, Mr. McCall attempts to intervene and actually knocks Mr. Rhodes off of Corporal Dupuy for a split second, but Mr. Rhodes quickly resumes his attack. A civilian intervenes and pulls Mr. Rhodes from Corporal Dupuy. At the same time, Corporal Dupuy draws his duty weapon and Mr. Rhodes grabs the weapon, attempting to take it. Mr. Rhodes states in his interview with detectives, he's reaching for his real gun, so I try to grab it from him. Mr. Rhodes also states, I was holding the gun. Not the gun, but his wrist. During this time, Mr. Rhodes yells, he's dead, four times. Despite having been knocked unconscious, Corporal Dupuy has the presence of mind to holster his duty weapon and draw his taser as Officer, Officer Moore arrives on scene. And the taser is deployed by Corporal Dupuy and Mr. Rhodes is successfully handcuffed. During the interview with investigators, 
Mr. Ray, Mr. Rhodes stated he told Corporal Dupuy he was sorry. During Mr. Rhodes' interview with the investigators, he also admits that the music was loud at first. During questioning, Mr. Rhodes is told by the investigators that the officer could have shot him. And Mr. Rhodes replied, yes, that is why I said I expletive up. In addition, during his interview, Mr. Rhodes was asked by the investigators if he had any questions. And he replied, I mean, whoever talks to the officer, tell him I was serious when I said I was sorry. That's all I want you to tell him. After reviewing all available and pertinent evidence regarding this, I find that Corporal Dupuy acted not only in a professional and competent manner, but he exhibited great restraint in what could have easily turned into a far deadlier situation. I want to commend him on his professionalism and demeanor before, during, and after the incident. I fully support his actions, and I am thankful that he did not suffer even greater injuries or worse. All of our officers have an extremely tough and demanding stressful job that requires serious decisions to be made in milliseconds. That is the nature of police work, always has been and always will be. But when we have the facts and information that show the officers acted reasonable, as Corporal Dupuy did in this situation, we must strongly support these men and women. As I stated previously, we as a society cannot allow violence against our law enforcement officers when they are serving and protecting our communities through reasonable and just practices. Thank you. Thank you, Chief King. And thank you, APD, who along with other city employees do their jobs courageously and diligently every day. When you watch these bits of video, it is easy to forget that these are people with families. This officer is recovering from his concussions. The young man who hit him expressed his remorse within an hour and wanted to call the officer to apologize. What happens now is up to the justice system, but let us not forget these are real people. This issue has gained some national social media attention. But right now, I want to speak to the citizens of the city of Alexandria, Louisiana. The people who live here and the people who work here. To say that 2020 has been a difficult year is certainly an understatement. Our community was locked down for months and even today faces uncertainty due to the COVID-19. People have lost their jobs, loved ones right here in our own community. Many are fearful of this virus and its far-reaching impacts and the great unknown. When will we get back to normal? Will there be a vaccine? Am I safe in going about my daily life? The questions are endless and the answers are very, very few. And while dealing with the COVID-19 crisis, we then saw the tragedy of George Floyd. We heard the protests right here in our own streets. And I'm proud to say <clears throat> that Alexandria has come together and have an uncomfortable conversation, which is required, in a peaceful and respectful manner. I remember similar protests and conversations in Alexandria in the 60s that were elders who guided me then, just as I want to help guide the young people who are looking for a chance of change today. I believe we have seen peace and respect among our citizens because we are all unified in our love for this city and our goal to make it better. And I'm grateful for all of that. <clears throat> there are people who want citizens of Alexandria to pick a side regarding this difficult issue. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as your mayor, I say don't fall in that trap, please. You can be for equality and support the police who protect and serve you. You can disagree with someone's point of view and still be kind. You can make mistakes, suffer the consequences, and then learn important lessons to better yourself. You can be wronged 
and choose to forgive. You can't be any race, any political party, any gender, and do the right thing. And doing the right thing is the basis of the administration that I have to work with. <clears throat> we are not perfect, but we strive to be fair and to be consistent. Every day we look to improve this city, the way it operates, the way it looks, the opportunities it offers for its citizens, and the safety of both the citizens and, as well, the visitors. There is work to be done in the city of Alexandria. Make this a better place for all of us. I commit that we will work every day to do our part. But you know we cannot do it without you. We need your help in nurturing our young people so they find the right path to their very productive future. We need your help in setting a high standard for your neighborhood so that those who deal drugs or look to violence are forced to move on. We need your help to be proud of our city so that businesses and people want to move here so that there are more jobs for all of our citizens. You, the citizens of Alexandria, the people who live and work here, are a critical part of the solution. And we can do it together, Alexandria. So with that, the Chief and I will now try to take on any questions that you all may have for us. Chief King, you said that uh, the officer was knocked unconscious for some time, but then reached uh, or tried to grab his weapon as well. How long was he unconscious? We were trying to clear up that situation. We, we, we know he was knocked unconscious for a short period of time. Uh, what happens in these instances is the first blow, you, you appear that that's the blow that knocked him unconscious, and the subsequent blows are what actually woke him back up out of unconsciousness. And during that time, he was still being attacked and still being struck by Mr. Rhodes. Are y'all going to release the uh, footage from the second officer or the other officer? The other officer, the backup officers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're evaluating those. We wanted to get these out here as quick as we could so that we could kind of clear up some information, misinformation, so people could get the uh, full story. And you're still under investigation, you said. The criminal investigation is still ongoing. There will be no internal affairs investigation. As I stated, he, he acted reasonable during that situation, and he is cleared of any potential misconduct. Do you anticipate any more charges coming out of this incident? To the individuals? No. What they've been charged with is, is what we appear that their final charges will be. I want to clear this up while we're all here. There's, we can get a lot of messages and comments about this, that there's a video of an officer spitting on the, on the, on the man. Is, it, is that true? What do you guys know right now? We've reviewed the videos. That is not true. Corporal Dupuy was bleeding from the mouth, and he did have a mouthful of blood, and he did turn to the left, and he spit onto the ground. He was actually at the feet, or at the foot area of Mr. Rhodes as he was laying on the ground, and he actually looked at the video, and he turns to the left to clear all the blood that was in his mouth. He spit onto the ground. He did not spit on Mr. Rhodes, and you can see from the videos there were a lot of people out there. If somebody had seen Corporal Dupuy spit on him, they would have obviously pointed that out, seen that. It just didn't happen. And you said that, that Mr. Rhodes wanted to reach out to the officer. Has he gotten that message, the apology? I've relayed that information to Corporal mm -hmm. Dupuy, yes. Okay. Well. We want to thank everybody uh, for showing up. Appreciate it. And uh, if we need to have some sidewalk conversations, we're available. Thank you.